All right, we're about to start in just a bit. I think we got everything situated. Yeah, we got everything situated, so we should be good. Mr. Mark. Okay. Alright, let's go. Alright, uh, welcome back everyone. Uh, this is Samurai Travel again, and today we'll be playing uh, Empire Total War. And of course, Empire Total War is one of the classic games that I started playing when I first got it on my birthday in particular and uh, of course I kept uh, asking my my parents or my mother in particular to at least get me this game because at that time I think it was since this was released on March 3rd 2009 I think I started playing in around 2000 and 11 or 2013 or some sort uh, mainly because uh, at that time I my age uh, did not meet the requirement I suppose and of course um, within this game it requires a lot of strategy and tactics so and which of course it uh, helped prompted a lot of the um, situations where I was able to just focus solely on just being able to, I suppose, um, just being able to at least learn how to properly have proper formations and so forth. So that's what I enjoy about it. And one quick thing that I forgot to do, which I, of course, by the way, why is the stream unlisted? Yeah, it was mainly because I was first I was like testing make sure everything was good to go and I realized at the very last minute that it was unlisted so thank you for pointing that out again there you go all right for those that missed the first half already um or so forth <laughs> I appreciate y'all for bearing with me a uh, stay is a little as there was a delay in the the schedule, so to speak, I was trying to get it to run around 8.30 a.m. Right now it's 8.52, so 22 minutes have already elapsed because I was trying to make sure everything was good to go. So, hey, welcome, Red Gaming Dino. So, yeah, um, basically, this is Empire Toy War. This is one of the... Uh, one of my favorite games that I enjoy playing. I somehow stopped playing around last year or so because mainly I, I think I sort of got burnt out in the process. So, but uh, nevertheless, it's a good refresher, uh, especially if we're starting on the campaigns. As for the Total War Online, since there are fewer people nowadays that play this game and they're more so leaning towards like Warhammer or even the recent new games like the Warring Kingdoms, which I really wanted, but right now it's like $60 and I'm looking forward to it if when it arrives on Chris when the Christmas special occurs. Um, or even New Year's uh, special, so that would be nice to at least get a reduced price rather than just buying it as a hope, buying it as it is at the moment, so. So yeah, uh, but nevertheless, 
we'll be getting right into it. As for me time, uh, for those that are looking into the controls, so for me personally, I would, in order for me to, I probably have to refresh myself again, but normally I would left click to like drag uh, to get all of the men in position and just uh, put them forward. Uh, normally, this is what, these will be your default settings. You can always change them by just um, clicking on clicking on the specific uh, button that you want to change, and then whatever it is, like let's say you want it for G or some sort. So that would be to group and ungroup units. But for me, I won't do that because uh, I normally just use whatever default settings I'm given, uh, which kind of helps me out. And you can always, I think, um, as for me, for, me, for the meantime, I think the quality was like automatic or low medium of some sort. So, uh, but nevertheless, let's go ahead and head right into it. So this is a single player and there's a, so normally they would, people would start out with battle tutorials, um, but normally, but for me, I just prefer to start out with the road to independence just to get the feel of it first. And this is the Jamestown Colony um, back in April 1607. You can always adjust the difficulty settings for campaign and also battle difficulty. Um, I'm like about to eat lunch, rip. Hey, you can... Like, feel free to, like, stop by a little bit later on, because I don't want to interfere your lunch. <laughs> Red to Kimmy Dino. But appreciate you for stopping by. So, yeah, so basically for the campaign difficulty, I would... Let's see, currently I have it on... So currently it's on easy, then there's normal, there's hard, and there's very hard. Uh, normally I would just stick with normal first, and I just get a feel of it. Then later on, progress. Uh, into hard and so forth because um, I think that's the best way to enter the game uh, is to get a feel of it and it's been quite some time since I've done so so now and also for battle difficulty you can also do that but for the meantime let's just go ahead and start with the rotated impediments and then they always provide like some the quotations in which some of them I do find fascinating uh, but nevertheless uh, this is the game that I kind of reminisce and I kind of thought about recording it but then at the same time I don't have too much storage on my gaming laptop so that's why it makes it a lot more difficult to have like a uh, large file stored so I ended up uh, is best to tonight. like stream it out so that it's yeah Oh snap, this is Bunker Hill. Oh, wait, nope. Uh, this is just a series of... <laughs> I almost caught myself off guard there. Not gonna lie. Tonight, so. we fight for freedom. As I bear witness to the sacrifice of this generation, I take great comfort in the memory of our forefathers. Those pioneering men who traveled to these shores seeking a new life. Like the intrepid Captain John Smith and his fellow settlers, we too seek a new world. Not only for ourselves, but for future generations of Americans. As I look back on their endeavors, at the unknown dangers that awaited the pioneers over every rise and behind every tree, I am reminded that I play but a small part in a much greater story. <coughs> Ready yourselves, fire! Oh my gosh, I just actually... I guess my then. water drinking actually interfered. Wait, let me just quickly... Okay, let me just like... Increase it a little bit more. Okay, there we go. So, this is the settings right now. We basically have... Two militia, I suppose. Okay, so here it is, and I guess for user interface, 
there was like a mod that you can actually expand the number of men on there, but I don't think my PC can handle it, honestly. So that's why they're given, we're given like limited amounts to, to at least reduce the lag or some sort. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, this is it. And of course, if you use your cursor, you can spin around to look around the settings. Um, and normally this one over here would be the generals because there's less uh, men involved and mostly these are consisted of bodyguards. Uh, as for these ones, uh, some could be for the Indian side, it could be the uh, medicine men and so forth. So, and whereas over here, these are normally, uh, if you see like these troops with the farmer hats, or straw hats, these are considered like the militias itself. So and militias are considered the the weakest or so forth. Or not even let's go ahead and go back. Uh no, I meant these are just settlers, so in itself, um basically you normally just click on it. You can right click to right click the cursor to drag to reform and with the space bar for my for my settings i'm able to see what is the formation like i only discovered this like maybe like second year playing this honestly so this is um it would have been a lot more helpful if i knew this and of course if you click on toggle move speed you get to um quickly um, get your things settled and over here is a little bit tricky i think i'm gonna get mass slaughter on this one not gonna lie, by the time they reach. So we're gonna go ahead and use hand-to-hand -hand combat on this one for melee mode. And over here we have that prepared. And we'll quickly... I think we should be able to decimate them. I only lost one one man so far, so... And then I'm gonna reform... Oh my gosh, actually... Nope, no, no. And over here you have toggle fire at will as well, so you can, so it will do both melee and also sh fire at the same time. And you can, if you right click, you can also target specific targets. So for example, if we, I don't think we will, oh, we didn't kill the commander. Okay. So normally it would be best if you like take care of the fire upon the generals because that would decrease their morale. And then you can also choose to end battle to lessen the casualties for the enemy as well as, and also for yourself but um, sometimes I have a I don't know if it's best to say it but uh, under that I think some people have a sense of bloodlust or want to exterminate all of the opponents because over here in this game in particular you can't really capture people uh, and convert them into your and convert them into your own army. Uh, however, you can't do that during naval battles, uh, where if you board and upon another ship, then you're able to then capture them, or if they surrender, then you get to at least add them into your group. However. Uh, for land battles in particular, you can't capture units, you can only exterminate them. Hence, that's why there's two options that the the game gives you. Is either you end the battle to lessen the casualties of your enemy, or you can continue it to fully, if you can, fully exterminate the whole entire army so that the enemy army so that they don't become a nuisance later on. So, that's uh, basically it. So, and honestly, this won't really do much, um, especially on campaign mode, though, uh, given that uh, the remaining parts of the army won't, sh I don't think, will show up. Uh, but it's always good to try it out, or uh, at least experiment it out to have a better sense. And of course, you can, uh, you can also check on the 
the range as well by right-clicking on your units. So for instance, this one, the Jamestown Settlers have a range of 70 and accuracy is 40, so that's kind of off. Uh, reloading skill is 20 seconds and ammunition is like 14, so you always want to make sure that your ammunition box is at least full at most times. If not, like make sure to also keep in mind because once you run out of your ammunition itself, you can only use this for melee. And you have the charge bonus, you also have defense for 9. So settlers uh, in itself wouldn't be good uh, if it's against like medicine men, which are more which their aggressiveness in melee is a lot more higher in this case, so yeah, um, basically you got chief cheese pick, <laughs> that's funny. And of course, um, this is the unit statistics, you can see which one uh, gained experience, and it looks like the Jamestown Settlers already got more experience than the commander himself, which is John Smith, and yeah, so let's go ahead and exit. Yeah, I'll let the AI do talking first before I <laughs> interfere. So, yeah. From the very beginning, there have been hardships, irreplaceable losses, brothers, fathers, sons lost to war, famine, and disease. And yet our forefathers endured, refusing to give up on the one thing they all believed in so fervently, freedom. Those brave men built a future from an inhospitable land, taming it and making it their own. But the wild land was not the only threat. The natives were a constant menace, lurking at their borders, always ready for battle. It became obvious that until borders were clearly established, peace would continue to be elusive. You must lead the early settlers to establish Jamestown as a safe and prosperous settlement in this dangerous new world. From time to time, the British government will issue various missions to perform. As you complete these missions, the wealth and security of Jamestown will improve, and your influence throughout the whole of the new world will expand. Having survived the immediate threat posed by the native tribes, your settlers have already gained valuable combat experience. Okay, so basically this is the new beginning. Of course, this is your uh, capital, uh, Virginia, or Jamestown, Virginia. And this is the mission that they have recently issued. And of course, the objective is for peasant farms. So your first task in the new world should be the protection of Jamestown settlement and the survival of this people by building a farm in the designated area. West of Jamestown, uh, the colonists will be able to produce their own food and sustain themselves in the years ahead. Supplies from England are irregular and not guaranteed. You must make Jamestown self-sufficient in order for this fragile colony to survive. And of course, the re reward treasury is 500 plus gold. And you always want to keep in mind of how much uh, available funds you have because the more military units you include in your unit, or within your group, it will add up the cost. And in order to, you can also, normally if you are playing the road into independence, like let's say after you face Bunker Hill and so forth, uh, you'll be able to check in the government area 
which will allow you to see what are some of the expenses. Uh, as for here, just in case if you guys like accidentally exit out the mission and you, you forgot what was, you can always click on this uh, objectives, which is on the lower left hand corner uh, for you to see what's the mission about. And over here, this is the uh, pocket watch where on the right hand side, used for intern, you can always do that to at least regain, um, let's say if you're hiring more troops. Um, yeah, so let me just... There you go, okay. So basically, in, in this part, uh, if you click on the region capital, you can normally you can technically upgrade it. Uh, later on, you'll be able to do like military mansions, and uh, which will help you expand uh, to other new military units. Uh, whereas uh, you can also upgrade this into later on like a, a palace estate or so, which will then help increase your economy and so forth and over here we hit the recruitment tab and we have jamestown settlers and also the militia colonial militia has 45 accuracy uh melee is 10 so that's two points higher uh, in terms of melee attack and in terms of defense wise it exceeds it by six and also morale is a lot more higher Hence, uh, for me personally, when I start this campaign, I prefer to just hire a, a lot of colonial militia. And, and I normally would try to disband this, but since they have become veterans, uh, in this case, you can always, if you see like this, um, this half, uh, no, this is like somewhat of a triangle mark or so, or this acute angle mark vertical AQ ankle mark in this case uh, this shows like their their marks uh, or their experience in particular which is experience one uh, you can get it up to three and there and three is the max um, and of course you can also check out their abilities which uh, in this case the sellers advantages they can hide in woodland uh, light scrub inspires nearby units and good stamina uh, whereas for here abilities is um, woodland and light scrub and but they can't camouflage or blend into uh, the woodlands and so forth so yeah and of course you can always read the background as well uh, just for your interest uh, if you're if you want to understand the details behind each uh, classification of the units and it is quite uh, intriguing to read and of course this is uh, what life was like back in the 17th century in this time and of course it's no it, not gonna lie um whenever i read about the jamestown colony they had like at least if i roughly i could be wrong but i think there's like two or three cannons on each of these three triangle points and i always find that like kind of hard to defend because imagine if uh, you only have one, one, at least two cannons if you're fighting on this side. And imagine if you have like a whole flock of units right nearby the forest and they just attack one single point. They can, if you have like a massive army, you can at least flank from all three sides. And then that would allow you to at least not only get inside access and basically it will just render the cannons useless on all three sides. In some ways unless they can turn it around and fire it and they had like canister shot but most of the time during this era they had only round shots so but yeah nevertheless uh we'll go ahead and quickly um end turn on this one and i realized my couldn't okay there we go i was for some reason i was not able to drag it okay so let's go ahead and build that technically i was supposed to do this like ahead of time but i kind of uh forgot it along the way so uh we'll just go ahead and rec recruit as many of the colonial militias as possible uh we'll be building that up in just a bit and of course if you click on this uh let's say if you see like a it's like a hammer and a shovel or something that means that you it's a construction site you can always um uh, see what is the you can always click to see what other available options there are especially when it comes to 
building a small uh, cotton plantation or it could be a small tobacco you can always right click to see what other um, benefits it provides in this case it provides 15 barrels of tobacco uh, produce each turn or you can go for 15 bales of cotton and honestly um, at that time tobacco was uh, now used for like cigarettes and so forth is considered more profitable in comparison to cotton itself so we'll be building tobacco instead and of course over here um, this is like a notification uh, if you see two swords um, sort of like in dual uh, this is a unit recruited um, basically it'll and you can always click on the magnifying glass to see where it's located. And over here, if you see like the gray tab area, um, this is um, basically uh, it shows what. Basically, uh, this is whenever you're defending. Normally, these are your backup uh, civilian units that you can use for defense. So, uh, so yeah, that's basically it so let's go ahead and regroup so we click on here click on this unit and as you see like the two arrows pointing in opposite directions that means that you can regroup and of course um the, also we can if you right click you can also go to a specific direction over here if you see the x that means that this is the the limit or the barrier that you can't that you can go further um if I were to, yeah, so we'll go ahead and end our turn right now. And of course, we got a uh, mission has been successful when it comes to building the peasant farm in particular. So, and also constructing the building. So now we got an additional 500 and Newport emerges, which is your town over here. And now we got, okay, so now we have to build a fishery. And over here, this is a fishery. It produces 200 plus gold, um, plus 0.3% increase in population gold, which is pretty good. Uh, later on, you'll be able to see technology and also the. You can also compare other nations uh, in terms of like wh how well your technology is, uh, or even uh, military strength as well. So, yeah. But nevertheless, we're currently trying to build up as much of the militia because later on um, we'll be fighting a huge force and to be reckoned with. And these are best these are best units uh, to use, especially in early game. So yeah. And also, oh snap! It's twelve a twelve a.m. Hong Kong time. <laughs> snap! I didn't realize that too, bro. It's like twelve p.m. EST. Very unexpected for me. Oh well. Um, yeah, right now it's like 9.16, so I'll probably end it within the next four minutes or so. Yeah, so just want to give a heads up on there. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and I think this should be done within two turns, so. Alright, so plantation has already been built. Okay, we'll just quickly uh, speed that up. Oh, by the way, if you click on, I think if you click on spacebar, you can actually in turn real, uh, real quick as well too. And this, I guess, um, this unlocks chapter two. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, so basically what happened is this. Um, so right now the objective is to... Let's see. We wrote... Kamako, what the heck? Um, let's see. Attacks on Jamestown and surrounding farmland conquered a... Oh, okay. Okay, so... so basically we have to take care of this particular. So right now we have two units available. Um, what we can do in the meantime is that uh, we can technically, if you spacebar, you can also speed it up. Um, at the moment, their army is like slightly more, at least 30, 30 men. Uh, you can also continue siege. Um, and then you can also 
um, to at least somewhat pause. And then for me, I just regroup my units so I can now at least demand surrender. Surrender accepted and now we have done so. Okay, the, the only issue now that's left is that mm, that this may if it's if this army that surrender is part of theirs, they may end up start they end up they may end up raiding this capital as well. Uh, so that could be an issue. So for the meantime, we'll just go ahead and quickly repair. Uh, I'm just going to station at least a couple. I forgot how many. Oh, they only have two units. Okay. So we'll, for the meantime, we'll just bring up some of the army. I think this one is like max, by the way. So uh, that can be somewhat of a tricky situation. So, And then for the meantime, we'll quickly recruit as much of the colonial militia. We can technically just slaughter them, honestly. I don't mind doing so, just so that you guys can see some battle action on there. But, uh, of course, some of you guys have some moral uh, uh, ethics, I guess, so to speak. So, you can just like, regroup you, and I think... So the objective right now was to take care of the Shakamox song. Okay. The last Native American town lies in the north, in the foothills of the mountains. And secure and well defended. So yeah, um at first technically we could have gotten more experience by attacking them, I guess. Which with the limited amount of time, why not why don't we do so? Yeah, you know what? This would probably take at least less than five minutes. Oh. So you can, okay, for in this case, you can always do auto resolve, which will automatically generate resolve or automatically generate the result. Or you can actually just um, attack and or retreat, which retreat is not optional until you have less units than them. Right now, this is like kind of even in terms of manpower. And over here, you can also see what what's the likelihood of winning. In this case, it seems the possibility of me winning is higher than like at least 60 or 70 percent uh, against their 30 percent. So, well, this one, the melee unit, is a little bit more. Uh, this one is a lot more effective. Uh, this one, not really much. But uh, bowmen can actually fire rapidly. It's almost like a machine gun at that time. So, we'll go ahead and quickly do so. So, just so yeah. You guys get like a sense. I think you guys already got it actually. Now think about it. Like at the very beginning of the battle, uh, I think, or beginning of the chapter, when you're first starting, um, there was some of the melee attack, but we can see what's it like to also utilize this. And of course, the. Um, of course, as for the commander itself or the general here, it's better to not. Um, if you ca end up getting your commander killed, that will decrease the morale of this whole team, so, yeah. So just keep that in mind, uh, about it, and, yeah. So for me, I would normally just place some of my units in the... For the meantime, I would, like, keep it as is. Because I only have that few men. Try to like at least create this as like a sense of a bait. Or at least back it up. Pressing the space bar on your keyboard after orders have been issued displays the Army currently okay. Turning all the way down there. And over here you can always fast forward as well. So to make time go by faster. Now if you click on uh, the specific part in your radar map, you can always go back to the location which you wanted to go. So for me, I would just like left click and drag to have the whole entire thing. Um, or you can actually, um, what you can do is, oh wait, what? This is hidden. Oh, interesting. So you can actually control and then click on all of these units as well. 
forgot if you you can control A to have select all units. And 